everybody welcome back to my youtube channel george here from lgw3 orchids and exotics so i wanted to talk about pests uh, especially this time of year lots of pests get discovered especially as you start going through the plants and now we're settling in plants probably in most places that were warm through the summer especially if you're in the united states um, even in, you know, Central Europe, probably a lot of areas are cold, but a few of your plants have been in the house now for a month or two, uh, or more. And now it's a common, common time of year to find pests. So I recently purchased this cool little microscope. Uh, this was about a month and a half ago. So I figured it'd be kind of useful to examine some pests up closely. This right now is just a picture of a dragon fruit thorn. Uh, my dragon fruit, I actually had some aphids that I recently discovered. And, uh, you know, my guess is they just like the uh, sweet sap. You know, dragon fruit's a succulent. So, you know, that's uh, plenty of sweet nectar in there. But in any case, I wanted to showcase some other pests. So take a look here. And this one in particular can be a very pesky problem. Um, this is what most orchid hobbyists loathe. That is bidovial scale. And that is not a fun, easy pest to get rid of. Um, you know, of all the pests that you have to deal with, you know, mealybugs can, can be a real problem, especially with plants that have a lot of nooks and crannies but in my opinion bidovial scale is one of the most difficult to get rid of so typically what i would do for this kind of scale is i would initially clean it off i use a bio-friendly insecticide here i actually have this mixed up with uh, rubbing alcohol water so the ratio i use is probably about 40 percent rubbing alcohol 60 percent water and then i use some other stuff over here which is the neem oil um, neem oil works good you can get this anywhere here in the united states typically like a home depot low sells it or you can get it online and i also use this stuff this is Dr. Broner's uh, Pure Castile Soap. This stuff works great. You know, it's uh, it's pretty organic here. Um, won't hurt the plants. You can see there's some of the ingredients. Uh, coconut oil. Uh, it's got some other oils in there. But I just find that it does a good job at smothering the pests, of course. Um, a lot of these pests, especially when it comes to... Uh, bidovial scale and the other kinds of uh, the brown scale that you'll typically find which seems to be a little easier to tackle they're all made up of typically um, like a waxy coating and so you, you pretty much have to use like a rubbing alcohol to kind of break down some of the, uh, the shell casing to really make sure you kill the pest so uh, in any case I have some more pictures that I'm gonna display um, I'll showcase a uh, picture of the aphids that I took. Pretty cool. Another picture I took of the bidovial scale, brown scale, and of course the mealybugs. So pretty cool looking. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I've heard other YouTubers talk about it. You know, you, you think that you've killed off all the pests you can. And just when you think it's all gone, uh they come back again so um i've had to be a little more aggressive this is another type of formula i use this is a uh, bayer three in one this works pretty well doesn't smell good not really supposed to use it indoors but you know during the the cool season i'll give a little spray i'll mix it up with some water you can see right there i have a bottle mixed up i will spray it uh let's say if i'm going to be out of the greenhouse for several hours you know when you come back there's usually not much spray it dries on uh we'll kill anything on contact pretty much 
Uh, it is also a systemic, which is great. Um, and this will actually get absorbed into the plant. So hopefully it keeps the plant pest free for a while. But yeah, unfortunately, it's sort of a never ending battle. Um, you know, especially if you keep plants outside, you know, you, you can think you get rid of it all. You put them outside for the summer, you come back and sure enough, there's more pests. So um, I used to get freaked out a little bit initially early on when I would, uh, you know, when I got into this hobby, but you soon realize that it's really not a big deal. I mean, you can think of it as you could be sitting in your house watching TV, right? And then you got a little, a little gnat flying around, you know, you go to clean in a corner, you find gnats all over. I mean, pretty much anywhere you look, right? As no matter how clean you try to keep things, any little nook and cranny is going to have little bugs, dead bugs. So it's just, uh, you know, part of dealing with uh, plants and everything in nature, right? Everything serves a purpose, I suppose. So, all right, I'm going to show you some more pictures, give a little more in-depth explanation of some of the common pests, especially with orchids. And yeah, let me know what you think. All right, so on the topic of pests, uh, I have one plant in particular. This is a cooler growing maxillaria. Um, gets a really cool looking white flower, but for some crazy reason, this thing is like a bug magnet. I'm telling you, I have sprayed this thing multiple times with uh, Bayer 3-in-1. Get a little closer here. Uh, probably some of this is, or most of this should be dead for now. Uh, but you can see here, you can just focus a little bit. You know, it's constantly getting uh, mealybugs. And like I said, I've just sprayed the hell out of this thing. These things are so tricky to kill. And this, again, is one of these plants that's very, very difficult. You can see there, there's some, some mealybugs. Very difficult to kill on this tree. No matter how much I spray it, put on. Um, I have a feeling in the springtime I'm really going to have to take this thing out and spray the hell out of it. So with some other chemical, maybe orthene or something else will do the trick. Um, I know people, even commercially, they kind of mix it up. Some of the pests can kind of get used to some of the insecticides and things like that that are used. And so sometimes the recommendation is to mix it up. Again, you know, growing indoors, I do not like to spray with anything too nasty, especially something that's going to make a lot of stink in the greenhouse. So, yeah, so that's one of the maxillarias that I have a problem with mealybugs. Now, on the topic of scale, I uh, had a little bit on this cattleya here. You know, these tend to be plants as well where you can basically get scale that builds up here inside the, the suitable part where the sheep is. So, just one of those things you need to keep an eye on. Again, it can be a pain, sort of a never-ending battle. Zoom out a little bit here so you get a better view of uh, how everything is doing. So, yeah, other than that, I can't really complain. Um, again, pests are to be expected, especially during the wintertime. You know, you're bringing plants in, plants that were outdoors throughout the summer. And, yeah. Take a look at those mealy bugs. Unbelievable how persistent these little buggers are. Very interesting. I recently put a new fountain here in the greenhouse. And it looks like all these little guys congregated up at the top. I guess for humidity. And take a look at the plant they're on. This is a Grammatophyllum. So I have to say this video will not have a happy ending for these mealybugs. However, I won't video their death, but very interesting behavior. 
Okay, so today I'm just gonna go over uh, some pests commonly found uh, within a greenhouse. Uh, could be also in your indoor growing area, although most of these due to, you know, clumping of plants, keeping multiple plants on a rack, you're probably more likely to see some of these uh, culminate within a, uh, in a greenhouse area. So, first one, and I'm gonna go in order as far as um, I would make the logic of being the worst to probably the least worst as far as doing plant damage. So the first one I want to talk about is thrips. So personally where I'm at in the New Jersey area, United States, uh, these aren't as common, although they are here um, outdoors, probably you know during the summer. Um, I haven't had too many issues with these, uh, knock on wood, as far as the greenhouse plants. Here you're seeing these look more like the, the babies. Typically you would see these, they look almost like little black grains of rice. And these little guys are very difficult to get rid of. Um, they fly around, they tend to get into the media, especially if you have bark. A lot of times you have to use um, some sort of heavy uh, systemic or some sort of uh, toxic you know, chemical to get rid of these. Um, and they reproduce fairly quick. Um, I guess here it's showing, you know, they can reproduce female up to 80 eggs. Um, they can hatch within days, especially during warm weather. Again, I tend to find these more of an issue in southern climates where it's a bit warmer. Not so much where I'm at except during summer. Next one I would have to say would probably be white fly. Um, again, these basically um, you know, suck the sweet sap out of plants. They end up uh, killing the leaves. These, uh, they, they tend to congregate underneath the leaves. And you can see here, they're actually, they lay quite a bit of eggs. You know, the babies will hatch and then they will begin to eat the sap in the plant, slowly killing off the leaf. The leaves will turn yellow and they can wreak, wreak havoc as well. And again, typically a good systemic will do the job to get rid of these for the most part. Okay, next one I would say, and I'm actually gonna revert to some pictures here in my personal greenhouse. Um, here is a picture of scale. Now, these little guys here, they tend to develop a, a hard shell. There's actually two varieties. I believe there's a hard and a soft shell. The hard shell uh, typically seals itself around the outer edges here and it makes it pretty difficult to to actually get rid of of the scale um, by scraping it off so typically what I would use would be some sort of like a rubbing alcohol mixture with some soap and that kind of dissolves this outer casing it tends to be a little bit waxy there's a couple other close screenshots here you can see and again these these do not move quick or really observable with the naked eye at all. Um, you can see them on the plant, but they, they move very slow. Okay, next one, this would be, see if I can zoom out here. This here is a mealybug. Mealybugs tend to be, um, they tend to crawl around on a the plant. These you can actually observe moving. Um, they can move fairly quick. And again, you can see here, it almost has like a powdery substance on the body. Um, and these guys can, can typically uh, create lots of babies. The babies will hatch. And, and the bad thing about these is they tend to get right in between the nooks and crannies of the leaves, especially if you have some sort of uh, vanda like growth they tend to really get down in there so you can think that you've gotten rid of all of them and then a week or two later they'll come back so typically what i will use is some sort of a an oil based spray maybe a neem oil with some rubbing alcohol and a little bit of uh dr broner soap something to that effect usually keeps them away and now this is an aphid. Aphids, these little guys you can also see move, uh, although they don't move too quick. 
Um, you can actually see here they have like little hands with looks like little hairs on the end and these, they actually attach onto the plant and they'll crawl around and they'll actually take all the sap out of a plant. Um, I tend to see these on peppers. Uh, I have a dragon fruit in the basement that I'm overwintering. I recently found some of these on there. Again, fairly easy, easy to get rid of. I just typically mix up some Dr. Broner soap with some rubbing alcohol, spray them on there, wipe them off, and it usually takes care of the issue. Um, also, if you want to go the natural approach, you can go ahead and get some ladybugs. They love these things. And last one I want to go over would be spider mites. So spider mites, let's see if I can pull up a picture here. Spider mites. These are probably should have been a little higher up on the list, but if you look here, essentially they create little webs. Uh, they are not related to spiders which is why you have to use a miticide as opposed to something that would kill spiders. They tend to build these little webs, um, typically in drier hot conditions or dry warm conditions. With higher humidity, they tend to not be as much uh, of a problem. Although again, if you have a plant that has a, a lot of sweet sap, uh, they tend to congregate to those type of plants and they'll build webs all underneath the leaves and they're almost hard to see at first but what will happen is you might see the plant oozing some sap you'll go to wipe it and it'll smear like a brownish red color and that's essentially your finger smashing all the little babies and all the, the spider mites that have hatched but again what I would do to get rid of these I typically spray some sort of like a horticultural oil with some rubbing alcohol, wipe them off, and then uh, typically a, a good miticide will help keep these guys at bay. Um, and again, also keeping the humidity up. If you spray off the leaves every now and then too, even just with water, once you do get rid of them, uh, that'll also help reduce and, and keep away the populations. So that's pretty much it. And you know, there's another one here. It's listed on uh, you know one of these pest lists. I see it's springtails. Personally, you know, I've heard mixed things about these springtails I've had in, let's say, a, a tray that I keep, plant, a humidity tray. I tend to have springtails sometimes go in. I don't see them as a negative per se, um, as long as the population isn't too big. They tend to just eat some of the, the rotting material within the soil. They, they can, I guess, you know, do a little bit of damage to leaves or roots, although I've never really had that happen. Um, again, I sort of look at it just getting rid of detritus and other miscellaneous stuff that's breaking down within the soil. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much the main pest that most people will encounter within their gardens. So uh, I do recommend using some sort of a systemic. I know most people prefer not to use that I tend to go with like a Bayer 3-in-1 or something like that that's not uh, too, too toxic, but just enough maybe once a month, every other month on certain plants that are a little more problematic and to keep everything at bay. So, all right. All right. Just a quick update too. Here is my new and improved updated fountain. Uh, this guy, I decided to upgrade it, I guess it was about two weeks ago. Uh, I had actually added the addition of this tray on the top here. Slightly larger water base in there. I would say this thing holds, I think it took about seven gallons when I filled it up. You can see there, it's nice and clean. You can actually see the heater in the bottom there. And again, still controlled. Now, because it's a higher water volume, and again, this is in the basement, and it is near a window, We've had some cooler temperatures, even though I have it set for 86 degrees, it typically only gets up to about 81 degrees, maybe 82 on a warmer day. And that's with a 100 watt heater. So overall, I can't complain. It's definitely keeping it nice and humid in here. Plants appreciate it. You can see here, 
I've even hung some here on the edge. There's some other other orchids loving it. I'll show you this. This is a polybulbin. Let's see. Dynemia polybulbin, Golden Gate. This is one I got from a friend of mine, Weeds Orchids. So, yeah, this thing's doing great. Appreciates the, uh, the warmer humidity here. Probably a little lower light than it would like, but that's yeah, wintertime. Overall, it's doing great. Yeah. And uh, just a quick update, too. This is uh, my little terrarium here. And as you recall, uh, there was a company that I actually demoed a product for, and that was their temperature slash humidity controller. You can see here, Digiten. Um, this thing's been working out really well. And, you know, one of the things that I found with this, in addition to keeping the plants uh, nicely controlled with humidity and temperature, is that it doesn't come on on a uh, on a cycle of let's say three hours or whatever the original setting was so now that it's set for a set point of humidity and temperature you know it only comes on when it's needed obviously and so it's not using as much water from the uh, the reptile fogger that I have set up there so that's uh that's sort of nice I only have to fill that thing maybe once a month now as opposed to every two to three weeks so but yeah, everything's uh, everything's doing great. Take a quick peek in there. You can see there, nice roots. I put some Spanish moss in there, so that's doing well. A uh, little oncidium back there. Yeah, everything's doing great. No complaints. So definitely uh, a product I would recommend. Again, I appreciate them sending it to me for. Uh, for a demo here, make sure, see how well it would work. And uh, again, it's been working out well, so no complaints. All right, I think that's pretty much it for today. So I just wanted to do, uh, you know, a quick little demo, talk about some pests a little bit. Um, I'll break it down. I'll show some, uh, some more pictures there with the microscope, give you some more breakdown details on pests some ideas on how to control stuff so again it's sort of a never-ending battle just one of those things you have to accept and see everything's doing nice nice and green cut back on the watering a bit with some of these so oh here's a nice one look at that beautiful flower there All right. Well, hope everybody got to enjoy some time with uh, family over the holidays here, whether it's Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. Hope everyone had a good time. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody.